Tim, it's Chris and Bart, and you know, first thing that comes to mind with Garrett Cole was the bizarre answer the other day. He gets to face <laughs> Josh Donaldson last night, and is I guess the thing that just continues to come to mind is, is it fair that Garrett Cole all of a sudden is the face of this problem that we all know is across baseball widespread? Yeah, it's not fair to go after him solely on this. And obviously, if a lot of other pitchers were asked the same question, I'd be interested to see how they answer it. But he just happened to be the first guy. And a lot more guys are going to get asked this question because this is a big story. And it's going to get bigger, my guess is, starting Monday when the umpires really start to check pitchers. They're going to start checking potentially infielders and catchers. And this this is a big story that has legs. Uh, baseball is concerned about this issue. And when the umpires are on board, and from all indications, the umpires are on board to do the checking, that's when you know this is a serious matter. And I'm now fascinated to see uh, how this process is going to take place. I mean, the policing this, enforcing this is going to be very difficult, but it's going to happen at some point and soon. If the spider tacky 3000 has always been a part of the baseball culture, uh, is it the fact that baseball overcorrected by changing the baseball plus the spider tacky 3000 that's really the problem? Because this sounds like a dirty secret that's been known in baseball, but it didn't affect the pitchers last year when the baseballs was flying out of the park. So did baseball overcorrect with the baseball? Well, that's certainly a possibility. But now we're in a spot where – you know, the, the hitters are really starting to complain. And now we might have a potential division even on teams between hitters and pitchers because I know the hitters that I've talked to. For instance, I talked to Kevin Seitzer, who's the hitting coach for the Braves, and he accused nobody of anything. But he said, our hitters are coming back to the plate, I'm coming back to the dugout saying, I've never seen a ball move like that. I've never seen a pitch like that. And that's a real red flag that if indeed the pitchers are doing something with the ball and it is a pitch that no one's ever seen before, then that's a real problem. And that's part of the issue here. And the difference between this year and maybe last year, the batting average in the big leagues is 237. We're headed for the lowest since 1968. And that's where these hitters are saying – Something fishy is going on here because the ball cannot move like that without help. And that's why we're going to get a whole bunch of checks starting next week. But the but last year, you heard guys like Verlander complaining about the baseball. So how do we find an equilibrium point or a, a, a balance between the baseball and the batters? Well, Bart, that's the real problem now is finding what can we give to a pitcher to allow him to get a good grip on the ball, and yet we can't give him too grip on the ball, too good a grip, because then he can learn how to throw a slider at 94 miles an hour with a spin rate at 2,800 or whatever it is. That's part of the problem. Now, I did the game last night between the Angels and the Royals, and Mike Matheny, former catcher, said, look, we better pump the brakes on – you know, uh, policing all of this because this is a very dangerous game and it's not a very safe game right now because so many pitchers have such violent stuff. Basically, a lot of them don't know exactly what to do with it. They can't control it or command it. And therefore, guys are going to get hit and they're going to get hurt. So here's a manager saying this is not a safe game right now. So before you take any of the substance away from a pitcher that might allow him to get a good grip, you better rethink that because he said, I know, you know, early on in Kansas City in April when it's cold, it's like a baseball feels like a cue ball covered with baby powder. That's how slick it is. And we're asking pitchers with great stuff and unbelievable stuff to try to command a very slippery ball. ESPN MLB insider Tim Kirchin joining us on the Goodyear Hotline. Chris Carlin, Bart Scott for Greeny today on ESPN Radio and ESPN+. Plus. Tim, with, with that in mind, it kind of shifts us to Pete Alonzo's comments yesterday. First of all, to that, 
that he doesn't mind if pitchers are using the grip because he doesn't want to catch 99 in the helmet, but also that baseball is manipulating the ball depending on the free agent class and who is in advanced arbitration. It's a conspiracy theory to be sure. What did you make of Alonzo's comments? Uh, look, I have great respect for him, and I admire him tremendously, especially for his honesty, but I, I'm not buying this. Uh, I mean, that would be a conspiracy in which hundreds and hundreds of people would have to be involved, and I'm sorry, I'm just not buying it. I, I don't think we're doing anything to the baseball this year, getting in it because um, – we have all these free agent shortstops and others available after the season. Sorry, I'm not going there. Uh, but there are conspiracy theorists out there. And with a new CBA up on December the 1st, there are people who are going to say, you know, owners, players are all going to try to get a little edge to, in order to get do better in the next CBA. But the, I, I just thought Pete Alonso went way too far you know, in this thought. You know, the, the first person to really know if, their pitchers are, are using stuff, are the catchers. And you heard so many, you know, you heard so many uh, catchers or the catchers for the uh, Mets come out and defend Jake DeGrom and say he's not look, using anything. Does that put the pressure on the rest of the catchers to come out and defend their, uh, their pitchers? Well, I've talked to a few catchers, and they're in a difficult spot because, A, they're hitters, and they don't want to go see a 97-mile-an-hour cutter that can only potentially work that way if somebody's getting some extra help, and yet they can't turn in a pitcher on another team because their own pitcher is doing this. So it's very, very tricky where the catchers are especially because they have to protect their own, and yet they have to defend at the same time and accuse at the same time. So, uh, I, so that's the point of all this is that this is eventually going to pit player against player potentially, and that will not be a good thing, especially going into the next CBA. Tim Kirchin, ESPN MLB insider, joining us here on Greeny on the Goodyear Hotline. Tim, what is this going to look like punishment-wise? We've heard about 10-day suspensions, what do you expect it to look like once the start next week, once this starts, and the delays that it could cause just the beginning next week if for those who are going to worry about pace of play and games taken even longer? Yeah, and that's my concern. You know, how many guys are we going to check? Are we going to check them every game? Are we going to check multiple guys? Are we going to check infielders? Are we going to check catchers? I mean, you're going to do this right. You're going to have to check a lot of people, and that could really delay a game that takes too long as it is. As for suspensions, I have to think this this is a pretty big deal, and I I know the umpires are in on this, and they are willing to do the job and be the policeman here. So I wouldn't be shocked if they throw the book at some people early if they're indeed caught red-handed and say, "Yeah, you're getting a ten-game suspension." That's a lot for a pitcher. Let's say you're a relief pitcher. That might be six, seven appearances in 10 games or something like that. So I think if baseball is going to do this, it's going to have to make it very clear we're going to punish you and we're going to punish you harshly if you get caught with an illegal substance somewhere on your uniform, hat, glove, whatever. Tim, last one. In the first 65 games of the year, we have seen these offensive numbers so dramatically down across the board. If they are enforcing it at that level, do you expect them to take a major jump relatively quickly? No, I, I don't. I still think the pitchers just have so many advantages over the hitters today. All the analytics out there, Joe Madden has been telling me this for five years, all the analytics help the pitchers way more than they help the hitters. And the hitters are now and have been in this this mindset that we're going to get the ball in the air and we're going to do some serious damage, which is why we have all these home runs. But at 237 and hitters thinking, all I have to do is get a ball up in the air and I'm good, that's where the pitchers are feasting on hitters who have one approach and one approach only. They have one beautiful swing. And if you throw it in that one beautiful bat path they have, it's not a single left field, it's a home or 20 rows up. But if you identify the bat path, pitch around it you don't just get them out 
to strike him out. So even if we find that guys are cheating and they stop cheating, I don't expect the numbers to go up offensively significantly. 